Before I get into this video, I want to remind you that we're actually giving away a replica Hylian Shield, two Zelda Switch OLED editions, and two Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Editions for the kickoff of our Prime Gaming Fest giveaway event happening next month. To enter, all you have to do is go down to the link in the pinned comment or in the description. We're also on our road to 133,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate if you go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's get into this video. So, look, I'm like most of you out there. I, I don't know if it's everyone, but most gamers out there right now seem to be playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and I am as well. I'm diving deep. But what's really interesting is the news surrounding this game after launch, and we have our first actual sales report coming in for Tears of the Kingdom. And it is essentially, so far, we don't have every region, but at least in this one region, the fastest selling individual Nintendo game of all time. What? What are we talking about? How is this happening? So I'm reading this over on Nintendo Everything, and they got a sales report in out of the UK uh, from Chris Dring on Twitter, who always updates everyone on the UK sales. So it says here, some initial tidbits have surfaced about the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom sales performance in the UK, and the game is off to what sounds like a fantastic start. Tears of the Kingdom is already the eighth biggest Zelda game of all time. Now, this is just overall sales, having already also Skyward Sword, The Wind Waker, and The Link Between Worlds. Note that this is based purely on boxed sales because Nintendo doesn't provide digital data for any region, let alone the UK. So it's highly likely Tears of the Kingdom is significantly higher, if not maybe uh, just behind Breath of the Wild at this point. We, we don't know. Sales for the Switch game are nearly a third bigger than Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy could have possibly had a bigger launch overall thanks to digital, but again, we don't know the digital sales for Zelda. So just counting box sales... Tears of the Kingdom actually outsold Hogwarts Legacy in the UK at launch. Tears of the Kingdom is already the fourth biggest Zelda game of all time in the UK when it comes to just revenue. It's a little bit behind Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, obviously Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom managed to earn a launch that was 173% bigger than Breath of the Wild. So it sold that many more boxed copies than Breath of the Wild did at launch. But it's technically not the biggest Switch release ever in the UK. That actually still belongs to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are on record, and Nintendo said this themselves, as the fastest selling Nintendo game of all time. But obviously there's a little bit of a caveat to that. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a dual game release, right? So it's one of those, lots of people double dipping on multiple copies, people buying the dual pack. So, and the dual pack, by the way, is being counted as two copies sold, not one. So it, it's one of those situations where Breath of the Wild, or in this case, Tears of the Kingdom, is competing directly with Pokemon's dual game release. This isn't like a one-to-one -one Legends Arceus versus Tears of the Kingdom. So this is why I noted at the very beginning that Tears of the Kingdom is highly likely the best-selling individual game because Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a package deal. So... That is really impressive for a number of reasons. First off, obviously Zelda, until Breath of the Wild, was never could, couldn't even dream of selling these sort of numbers. Couldn't even dream of having this sort of debut at launch. So that's that's number one. Is it, just looking at this as a gamer and as a Zelda fan of all you know. I've been a Zelda fan for most of the series' existence. I, you know, just. Looking at these numbers flabbergasts me because, I mean, we're talking about a, a franchise that until Breath of the Wild had never sold more than 10 million copies of any individual game. So that is incredible. But then on top of that, you look at this from the other perspective of this is the seventh year of Switch. We are in the middle of the seventh year right now. The seventh year began March 3rd. If you want to say it, fine, it began March 4th. It doesn't really matter. The point is we are in the middle of the, or in the process of, you know, doing the seventh year of Switch, and somehow Tears of the Kingdom is able to be the fastest individual selling game in Nintendo history, that is something that is just wow. And here's the thing, if it's anything like Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild showed that it has an evergreen status to it that most Pokemon games do not. So we know, you know, right now that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has sold like 22, 23 million copies, which is obviously incredible, but... With the evergreen status of Zelda, it could obviously long haul 
surpass that because Pokemon that's got violet sales tend to drop off significantly after a couple of months. And then, you know, that, that tends to be sort of it. It, it. There's very little trickle sales there. Whereas Zelda has popped back up, Breath of the Wild has anyways, several times in the top 10 over the last six plus years. So look, I'm looking at this from that sales perspective and going, Hot damn, man. What is Tears of the Kingdom doing? Now, this is just one territory. There are other expectations right now. Uh, we are expecting a north of 600,000, maybe close to a million game debut in Japan, which would be utterly incredible and just crush what Breath of the Wild did in Japan for Zelda. And Zelda games tend not to have like million plus or even close to million plus uh, debuts in Japan. That's just not how it goes. However, there are some interesting mechanics in this game that could really appeal to the Japanese audience. The Japanese audience really loves building games. Uh, that is why Minecraft is such a massive hit over there, even bigger than some other bigger territories. And obviously, when we have things like Master Hand in here, that could really appeal to that Japanese audience and help drive it home. But that's obviously, we we're expecting a really big debut in Japan later this week. We should find out on Thursday. Now, MPD-wise, we won't know for a full month, right? We're not going to know for a month from now. But what is interesting is that, you know, like Scarlet and Violet, Nintendo could come out this week if the sales performance is as impressive as people are predicting. Uh, some were saying maybe it doesn't hit Scarlet and Violet where it did 10 million sales in three days. But what if it's like seven or eight? That is probably something Nintendo would want to market and advertise as this is the must-have game of 2023, and just look how fast it's selling. So it'll be interesting to see where the sales fall in by the end of the year. We get a holiday season in. We don't know if there's going to be a new system. But, man, Tears of the Kingdom, for starters, I just say it deserves these sales. Look, I haven't done a first impressions video. I don't know if I will. I don't know that there's any value in me giving first impressions at this point. We are going to have a large discussion that's going to contain many impressions from Kit and Krista and Monster Maze, myself, Andres Restart, on Wednesday during our podcast. But what I can say is, this game, guys, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that I didn't go in with some skepticism. I know, you know, contrary to popular belief, uh, I'm not a Nintendo shill. I had concerns that maybe Tears of the Kingdom wouldn't impress me because... The one aspect that kept coming up in all of our podcast discussions is can Tears of the Kingdom impress us the way Breath of the Wild did? You know, Breath of the Wild even had that wow moment when you walk out onto the Great Plateau and, and like that is just such an amazing time and then obviously continue to wow us throughout. Could revisiting the same Hyrule, could the same, you know, similar mechanics, obviously brand new abilities, really impress us and blow uh, me away. And, and, and what I will say so far, I, I've got about... You know, don't want to get too deep into it, but I got, what, one dungeon down on my way to another and uh, have done several things in the game. I can't help but be impressed. Um, in fact, I'm getting yelled at because I won't put the damn game down. Uh, and I haven't had a game do that to me since maybe Mario Odyssey. That was probably the last time that I just couldn't put a game down. Um, so, I mean, other games, there have been times I couldn't put it down, but I was, you know, done with the game within a couple of days, so it didn't really matter, right? Like, I beat the game. This is a game that, I mean, I'm not even halfway through, guys. You know, all the story elements and stuff, I don't even, I haven't even done half of that. Like, there's so much in this game. Like, it, it really does feel like it's two to three times the content of Breath of the Wild, but it's not just that it's two to three times. It's that they had respect for the world that they previously built, and just found ways to make that world exciting again. So I just have to say, I'm really glad to see Tears of the Kingdom doing extremely well sales-wise. It was always going to do well sales-wise, but with critical reception being what it is, the sales being what it is, uh, I've seen so many more positive tweets pop up about this now instead of the negative ones that were existing before launch, which, sure, we went over the review bombing yesterday. And to be clear, review bombing happens to every Game of the Year contender. Like, if you look at Elden Ring last year... It got review bombed as well. That's just the way it goes, whether it's console warriors or just gamers in general wanting to tank a game that they don't think should be game of the year compared to whatever game they have coming up. As an example, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the people uh, trying to tank the user rating of Tears of the Kingdom right now are maybe fans of, of Sony and, and Spider-Man 2 and Final Fantasy 16 coming up, which will also be game of the year contenders. We can't say that it's going to be a shoo-in. Sometimes, some years you can go... Oh yeah, this is a shoeing game of the year. 
Last year was pretty close to a shoe in for Elden Ring. I would say God of War. Ragnarok gave it a little bit of a run, but it was really a two horse race. You look at this year, it could be three horses, maybe four as Starfield pans out as well. So it's going to be a very fierce competition this year, but I do think right now it's going to be pretty hard to top Tears of the Kingdom. Also a little bit fun, note, Elden Ring came out in the first half of last year, Tears of the Kingdom came out in the first half of this year, and if both of those win uh, Game of the Year at the TGAs, it will be interesting to, to note that, you know, when you're the when you're the game that sets the bar, it tends to be very hard to forget where that bar was set. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.